Good morning. Uh, sorry for starting late. The last talk was cut quite close. Um, yeah, my name is Markus Meissner. I'm an OpenSUSE member and I'm a Novell employee. And standing here in front of you to talk about uh, a bit about the free Windows emulator or the not emulator uh, wine. <coughs> Just some words um, about me. Um, I'm working for SUSE since 2002. I'm not working on wine for SUSE. I'm working um, on the topic of security, but security in itself is boring and you can't show pretty pictures. So I'm showing what I do in my spare time. So in my spare time, um, for now above like 14 years or so, I'm working on a wine. <coughs> and um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a bit about it and also will hopefully show some demos at the end. So the, the first question that people ask or that I ask myself is why would you want a Windows emulator on Linux? Every one of you knows that we have a full set of applications already, like the Office Suite is there, tools are there, games even are there, some, not much, but there are also a lot of tools already on uh, Linux and you do, usually don't need Windows programs. So um, there is, however, some software not really ported because the companies don't have the strategy to port them that's foremost true for Microsoft themselves. That's true for like people like Apple, who acknowledge that uh, Microsoft exists because it has 95% market share. And of course, there are Mac OS stuff and Linux. Hmm, yeah, we've heard about it, but there are no users that we are interested in. Second part is budget. That's mostly true for the game companies who want to push out games, 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 games. And if they work on Windows, they don't really have time to spend uh, on doing a Linux port or so, because all the programmers have Windows at these times and those Linux users are there, they are not really important. Or they just don't care. Or uh, Linux, too small. Come back if it's 50% market share or so. <coughs> and we address all those, or we try to address all those people that um, don't want to port their Windows applications so in that way that you can run their applications on Linux. Second question is, why not just use a virtualized PC? Why not just use VMware or however, whatever it's currently called, Parallels or whatever? Most obvious pro is that there's no Windows license necessary for using Wine. <coughs> of course, at the same time, a contrapoint is that um, the completeness of Vine, since it's developed um, continuously and it's, we don't have access to any Microsoft um, internal documentation, it's of course not complete yet, so not, not, not much might run, uh, not fully, it's not fully uh, um, built. A pro point is that it's integrated well into your system, while a virtual PC emulation is mostly in a fixed window and you can't move easily data out and copy and paste or so. It's um, possible with Wine. Um, <coughs> desktop integration like icons, like um, shortcuts or menu entries and so on for specific Windows applications. Fun, of course. <laughs> um, of course, you know, um, I will show that uh, we have working on this for 16 years now and we're not, not really doing small things, but doing quite an amount of coding, and it's huge. Of course, replicating the Windows operating system or the ability to run Windows applications is a huge effort. Microsoft continues to add features to improve on their APIs, and so we are, of course, always continuing to catch up. We might never catch up, um, but the interesting thing here is that Microsoft also has the compatibility problem. If an application runs on XP, then of course this application has to run also on Vista. And if people build this application, they ship it and hmm, it doesn't run on XP anymore, it use, needs Vista. So of course their customers, uh, customers also want a bit of backwards compatibility. So um, at this time, 
the, the catch-up curve is not so high anymore as uh, it was when Microsoft started with 96 bit windows, 32 bit windows. Um, now with 64 bit windows, we are seeing a slower migration rate of the programs and customers, so there isn't so much a um, steep curve for this. Of course, we have not everything implemented yet, yeah? as I mentioned, the completeness part. So, <coughs> yeah, so to, to give some overview, nearly 16 years old, um, out of a random ID on a Linux kernel mailing list, yes, why not just run 16 bit Windows programs on Linux too? So, and now we are here. We had the first stable release last June. Never, no one expected it that we finally would do it, but. Well, we just took a certain set of criteria and said, yeah, now it's ready for the users to test and to run. <coughs> In the meantime, we, uh, before that, we had over 200 alpha releases, 61 beta releases. So we had two years of beta phase, five RCs. And on June 17, it was released finally. We are not, of course, not stopped working on it. Um, uh, development is proving, uh, is going as fast as before, even faster, okay. um, I think. We are working on a one at one branch, um, which will in the end go to a one or two um, stable release. I will ta um, talk about some criteria for this later on. Over time, there were thousand, over a thousand out offers um, that we could identify. It sounds much, but uh, in reality, what we see is that at any given time, there are like 20 to 30 people working, sending patches. People drop off, new people come, people just send one or two patches. So, but overall, there are 1,070 contributors. It's picked up by various companies. There's the company called Codeweavers, which basic widget uh, whose business is really um, improving wine, selling wine via their crossover um, products, and they actually employ a large part of the wine developers, including our chief developer. There's Google, interestingly enough, um, because well, Google does web services and web pages or web things. It usually doesn't do any Microsoft programs. <coughs> so and Google's intent in there is um, to make Linux a better desktop system. Um, and for making it a better, better desktop system, some desktop applications are necessary, like Photoshop, like iTunes, um, and even their own um, Picasa application. So they do have Windows applications, and Picasa, for instance, uh, was ported using Wine. So now for the colored pictures. <coughs> How does it work? How does it look like in an overview design, uh, design view? On the left, we have the Windows basic application layout. We have the application itself that ships with DLLs. We have the user level system which has low level libraries that do file access, graphics, window management and dialogues and some abstraction libraries already like uh, Microsoft Foundation glasses and the application in, uh, interfaces with those DLLs. I omitted hundreds of them but um, that's sort of basic concept. Below those low-level libraries um, is the Windows kernel. Um, these days it's an NT kernel, and, but we usually we, we don't care about this interface. <coughs> <coughs> so what and what place um, does Wine integrate? So the application and its DLLs stay the same. Um, some of the core Windows libraries, like the Microsoft Foundation classes, we did not uh, replicate because um, of their closeness and undocumentedness, but they are usually freely redistributable, but I, um, especially for MFC. But we placed all the, um, the low-level system libraries. <coughs> we are not directly interfacing with the Linux kernel at this time, of course, but with the regular system libraries like um, X, libc, CUPS libraries, um, the ALSA control libraries, and so on. <coughs> yeah. So how um, is there anything special in, uh, in interfacing between those? So these directly uh, call into these libraries 
um, uh, and <coughs> the question is of course if we need to specially convert something here like um, which would explain larger overheads but no um, due to um, special calling conventions implemented in GCC um, again if the application DLL or application is loaded it can directly call into the wine libraries also um, as I said it's not an emulator the application and the binary code itself runs of course directly on the processor it's not emulated in any way it just runs and we basically hook up the function calls into those level libraries um, in the, um, and direct them to our wine implementation of it this gives um, for computing at least it's as fast as in windows and um, for the other implementations of the libraries it very much depends on um, how the Linux, how we map this to the Linux side. <coughs> so, how to install it? For the user, it's easy. Get the Wine RPM, um, install it. For OpenSUSE, it's only usually distribution, but of course, it gets outdated quite fast. So, we, uh, I have in the OpenSUSE build service in the emulator's Wine repository always the updated packages of the current development um, state, and that's it. Uh, yeah, there, there should be a C. <coughs> what about configuration? Usually, configuration um, we try to avoid, so we try to find very good basic settings, so that you usually don't need to even start this, uh, our uh, config tool. But we have a config tool, it's called WineCFG, and um, here's the main thing where you, here in, where you can, uh, it's a bit small printed, but um, where you can select the drive letters to which Unix path they, uh, they point. Of course, we cannot remove the drive letter concept from the Windows application, so we have to map them. And we have some standard mappings. We have a virtual C drive, which is um, in the home directory under .wine. Um, I think this X is my, my own entry, but um, we have the home directory and um, a drive also pointing to the slash directory of the system. <coughs> There's an audio tab where you can switch between ASA and OSS. There's a desktop integration where you can select uh, virtual desktops or something, but it's not um, necessary to, um, to run standard Windows applications. Yeah. Installing Windows software is as easy as for the user as running the setup Excel program these days. So you pop in the CD or download the Excel file from the internet and run it. So what goes on behind the doors? So the installation itself was really the largest part that we had to do. Um, most Importantly, most applications these um, today either you use Install Shield or a mix between the Microsoft Install and Install Shield. And the Install Shield itself is a very complex application. It's interesting that the installer is always more complex than the actually stuff it installs, but it's just one little funny thing. Why is it so complex? Because it's completely scriptable, automatable. You can up, uh, you can install updates with it and repair and, and so on. So <coughs> alone this complex uh, installation tasks um, make it made it necessary for them to have this large uh, kind of inst um, install programs. I have thought about it and I think we used about too many years of developer time to implement or to get it to a running state. MSI this is the standard Microsoft installer stuff. This is basically the package management of, of Windows, down from the low-level parts, from the low-level databases, up to really putting up dialogues and uh, asking user questions, including a fully scriptable interfaces, and including also hooking into other programs like Install Shield. Again, um, around two many years spent on this and I checked the DLL directory, it's like 50,000 lines of code. It was quite an effort. 
the, uh, the good thing is that now we are at this state that it's running. Uh, the improvements that Microsoft does, we can easily follow. So some words about uh, integration drives, as I said, point to Linux paths, um, either configurable vi by Vine CFG or by, um, by um, symbling <coughs> Sim linking them in a specific directory, so nothing magic. Registry we map internally to text files. Um, Win32 uh, Win has processes, of course, which we map directly to Linux processes. Um, so if you run PS, for instance, you see the .x even running on your system with a nifty rename trick. It's not with Vine foo.exe, foo but just foo.exe. So you see uh, um, the exe files running there. Threads directly map to Linux threads. Um, printing, um, we have a generic PostScript driver uh, written, which uses um, CUPS and LPR to get uh, PPD, the printer description files, and then output uh, PostScript to just the um, Unix print system. Networking, fortunately, Microsoft had the BSD networking as um, example and you mostly did it following that um, their methodology so it was pretty easy to implement train for scanners and cameras um, we mapped to the Linux library Sane and Gphoto um, in the last years the XML libraries um, came more and became more important which we mapped to XML2 and uh, libxslt A lot of work is, of course, done for graphics, uh, which we map to the X11 server. So there is no virtual frame buffer or something, but uh, we directly map to um, X primitives, <coughs> especially fonts. Um, we use font config, free type 2, and X render extension of the X server to render the, uh, the fonts correctly. We need to be quite low level on this because lots of applications can, can query all the um, interesting font layouts and font um, rendering data. So we need to be uh, at this low level of rendering them mostly ourselves. Window management um, maps to also the regular methods like X11 and window management. <coughs> so what did we implement? What uh, didn't really map the synchronization between processes and threads. That's a different model like um, like in Unix, so um, there was quite some effort doing this, and that's the only part where we need an external program helping us, the so-called Wine server. Window management, there's a lot of things that Windows gets, um, Windows and messages and so on get all in the right order. Cryptography, we hook into crypto libraries, but some parts are implemented um, uh, separately. Direct Show, that's all the multimedia framework. Direct 3D, um, I will talk about this later a bit. Uh, maps to OpenGL and HTTP, FTP, and STP, uh, SMTP clients. What is missing? HTML rendering, um, also used in the last years quite often by games or other tools. Devi embed the Mozilla engine. Um, and not uh, Linux Mozilla engine, but uh, Windows Mozilla port engine. Um, and we are, for other components, um, we use free downloads, free redistributable downloads, like for the MFC, for two library, Visual Basic runtimes, uh, video codecs, the fonts, um, DirectX runtime. Um, one word for the DirectX runtime is um, the DirectX is a huge library set. I will explain a bit later, but there are some helper libraries which we have not uh, cloned yet. So this is for this. And if you have a Windows license, you can download and use Windows Media Player 9 and 10. So applications. Um, some interesting applications. I will just go through some examples and mention the problems that they have. Next. Next, iTunes, Apple iTunes. Apple, with its company policies, of course, mostly focused on Macos. And since the Windows desktop space is so large, of course, also on Windows, but no Linux port because we are too small. And yeah. So it's 
except that it's a Windows application, what are our problems? The iPod access, which um, needs USB low-level support, which we have not yet done, but it's um, on near-range plan. <coughs> the iTunes store, which is, of course, cryptographically signed and ensured that everything is working fine and that no one can cheat it or something. So there was quite an amount of cryptography to be implemented to get the iTunes store run, but it works at this time. And of course, the interesting thing is that most applications have the ability to do online updates of themselves. So you have it running at one point in time, and then the application says, I need to install this new version, so more features, and it's required to the store to continue to work, and yeah, suddenly you have a new program, and it might not just run with Wine. Currently, uh, iTunes, however, runs with Wine. So, and this is where I just sh show that we do run iTunes. I hope that, that I find the entry in the menu. Mm. Ah, it's not in the somehow not in the menu. Control F1. iTunes, iTunes, iTunes. Mm. Okay, occasionally it does not put itself into the menu, but... Oh, I have not installed it. <laughs> I might not have installed it previously. Hmm? Yeah, there was an Apple software update, but I think not, not iTunes. <coughs> yeah. No, that's what. Hmm. Okay. I try to find it at the end. Um, there's Photoshop. Um, the one that I tested is CS2. Meanwhile, there's our CS3 and CS4, uh, which I think might not yet fully run. Also, just for Mac and Linux, number of Linux users is too small. Interesting here that the UI is very non-standard. So we had to make sure that our implementation of the UI parts is the same as, um, as what Windows does. Copy protection, also a large topic. Um, <coughs> this also requires very bug for bug compatibility to make sure that the application thinks it's not running on a, a debugger or um, under other problems. And lots of external separately buyable or purchasable, um, downloadable modules with unknown wine compatibility. I have just a screenshot these day, today. <coughs> so more interesting, of course, are games, because for us that are not using Windows applications on a desktop, um, most games are based on the DirectX API. Direct Sound is the sound layer, maps directly to ALSA and OSS. Direct Input maps to keyboard and mouse to X11 and joysticks to the HeID support on Linux. Direct Show um, multimedia play framework is implemented in Wine directly. The graphic things map always to OpenGL. Direct Draw is the 2D interface maps to OpenGL and the Direct 3D um, the 3D interface also maps to OpenGL uh, with GLX extensions. It's pretty complete, so we can claim that most DirectX 9 applications um, or using applications work and work pretty well. DirectX 10 support has just been started, so DirectX 10 using games are not yet supported. As the, yeah, copy protection I mentioned Especially for games, it's very difficult because nearly all games have copy protections. Tests for debugger, it's easy to do, but um, then they use Windows kernel drivers, um, which we fortunately can run. Um, because most of these Windows kernel drivers don't do hardware stuff, but uh, do stuff that we can also run in user space. And so we actually went and implemented the Windows kernel driver support in Wine. But it's only mentioned currently for those copy protections. So it cannot do hardware access or anything, but it's basically for things like safe disk or game guard. Unfortunately, some copy protections are even well more system level than 
others and so for instance Star Force is not at this time running. Of course alternatives are cracked versions but we try to avoid cracked, recommending cracked versions because uh, yeah, we just want to do run the Windows application as it comes and not um, hand out cracking tips. <coughs> yeah, so World of Warcraft, it's a bit dark here, but um, one of the top one or top two game, uh, the top one game, and Guild Wars, um, I think they're sharing the top two places. Um, is run, are running under wine. We have a very vocal community with those. Especially if we break something with a new release, they just five minutes later they will show up in our channels and complain that it's slower or broken or not working. But um, as I don't see those complaints anymore that often, I think we keep it pretty stable for them. So it's nice. <coughs> There's also a Silk Road online, which I don't know. We have a screenshot, but yeah. So, and now I try a demo, and I hope this time it works better. So, um, this is Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Uh, the installer actually put the icon there. So, yeah. Okay, movies playing is always easy. <coughs> yeah, um, again, this is just a movie, so I try to start up the game and show some 3D running. So, <coughs> uh, yeah, it worked as as I was in company. Yeah. <coughs> okay, the loading bar is progressing. So again, um, yeah, videos are easy. The 3D mm, uh, is mapped um, to the OpenGL libraries, and this and with GLX extension that has the only small drawback that for playing games you really need NVIDIA or ATI cards. So. Um, on my small ThinkPad with uh, Intel graphics card, I have no chance to play those games because they will complain about missing features and not work. You need an NVIDIA card and or, or an ATI card to use Wine for games or for these kind of 3D games. <coughs> um, you heard the sound. Um, sound is not that much of a problem, but um, we interface with the low-level sound libraries. There have been requests to use Pulse Audio, which is a sound server which also can do network stuff. Uh, it's always a bit difficult to use sound servers and interact with sound servers because they add, uh, yeah, because those sound servers. Um, yeah, it shows that there's still some improvements on speed on either the laptop or of wine. So, okay, one, one sees the objectives, one can look forward, look to the right, So and basically, um, yeah, I, I tried playing it, it's, I'm, but I'm not that much of a computer player. So, so, and the screen effect, I'm not sure if it's if it's correct or if it's if it's an <laughs> if it's an artifact um, of of a bug and wine. So, press E. Um, yeah, I've not taken it yet. So. Jetzt kommen wir durch die Tür. Okay, I think that's enough for just showing this. <laughs> there, um, a colleague of mine actually comes occasionally, he's playing games every day and every week. 
and he usually tries out every new online game that comes and so he usually shows up at my desk and says, Markus, this game isn't running, please check. Well, yeah. I'm not always able to help him. So. <clears throat> okay. So, if you want to check what actually runs, we have an application database um, on our website. Um, the list is from December. I did not update it, but I think the first the first entries likely will be the same. Yeah, Wine 1.0, I already said, um, that's now ready for users to test and that we are developing currently even um, the next, um, for the next stable release. What we target is better.net integration. Um, I did not mention it, but most uh, or lots of programs these days um, are a mix of binary and .NET code in Windows and we are not yet able to run those mixed binaries um, very well. There's the option of either loading the C Sharp runtime from Microsoft or the Mono runtime. We will see exactly how this all works out. 64-bit support, more and more 64-bit applications are showing up. The operating systems are 64-bit capable, so we will likely see more. Um, we have started on this. Um, I think it can run only simple programs and yeah. Diet X10, I hope that we get to something before next, uh, before mid of this year or so, with B device integrations and of course that all new applications run. More information on our website, um, including mailing lists, downloads, documentation and so on. And on the channel WineHQ at Freenode is our regular support forum. So and now I'll just take some questions. Uh, microphone? I don't see it. Hmm? Ah. Get us on. I'll just ask. Um, is there still floppy disk drive support? Because when I tried to use it last time, it simply didn't work. Okay, the question was is there still floppy drive support? Um, if you mount a floppy to a directory locally on a disk, and point the drive to it, then you can just run stuff on the floppy. So basically, Wine takes whatever the Unix uh, file system sees. So if you mount the floppy, then of course it will be seen. Um, accessing the floppy drive directly on a low level way, I, I'm not sure. Just try. Uh, another question? Yes. More about the .NET support. How is the situation there now if you have pure .NET applications and not mixed code? Okay, how is the situation about .NET support, uh, especially with pure applications, right? Okay. I understand that the mixed ones are the problem. The yeah. Point. For the pure applications, um, I gladly refer to the Mono folks. They have done quite a ma massive amount, and we are not we are not very much involved in there. So. Yes, but there is no direct integration with Mono and. Mm, not at this time. Yeah. Uh, so our idea is to either load the Mono runtime, the Win32 Mono runtime, and just use it like any other Win32 program in Wine, or the C Sharp runtime. I'm not so knowledgeable about this, unfortunately, but we are working on it. So, yeah. Other questions? I think behind Tom. Uh, okay, about applications like live meeting or net meeting, mm, I don't know right now, but I see no reason that they are not running. So it's it's an application that interfaces with a web camera, the network, and so it should it should work. If it's separately downloadable from Windows, then yeah, I think it should work. Yeah. Okay. Next question. is uh, Outlook. Mm -hmm. um, last week I tried to install Outlook with Wine, everything went okay, but I could start it up, but I could not connect to the server. Um, 
is there going to be improvement in one for this, or do you say now this is something you have to go to code weaver and okay. they will solve it for you? Okay, so integrating Outlook with an Outlook uh, server. Um, yeah, Code Weavers, you mentioned, um, is working on it. Um, and I've, I've heard that they are done quite some progress in that direction. Um, and uh, Code Weavers itself always publishes the finished stuff back to Wine. So they are working very closely with the Wine development. So if they do improvements for Outlook, uh, Outlook connection issues, then it will also show up in the regular Wine at some point in time. I've, I actually thought they had it already done, but I'm um, not, not sure if, uh, if it's all ready for use at this time. Yes? Uh, it's not a question, but more a recommendation. Uh, I usually find a lot of help in the application database you just mentioned, because there is, you can just type the application you want to test, and sometimes there are good reports like, well, you need that extra command line option to bind to tweak some things, and then it will, will work a lot better. So yeah. this application database is really useful. So yes, the application database is the one start point if um, the application just doesn't run for you. So you just look there, see some tips, and um, yeah. So yes. Okay. Ah, of course. We are, I, I, I told you about downloading some stuff, and uh, our our wine package and others um, include a very small shell script called Wine Tricks, um, which you just start. I can briefly show it. Sorry. Let's hope I have KDLog. So if you start Wine Tricks, it will offer some of um, the downloadable things. Most interesting, I said the MFC library that is occasionally um, missing. There are some other things where it would uh, will re 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 replace stuff like the visual basic runtime also that I mentioned. <coughs> and um, this one also installed Internet Explorer 6 or is an easy installer for Firefox or Windows Media Player. So it's a very small shell script to um, install common libraries or applications. So with this, I thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. And if you have more questions, I'll be available either outside or on the booth just right afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.